Hey, okay, so um, my name's Rohan Kapoor, and I'm a 14-year-old iOS developer. And uh, I won a scholarship to attend WWDC uh, this year, Apple's uh, Developer Conference. And I'm just going to talk about app development from my point of view. So I'm actually going to talk about two things today, what I develop and how I develop. All right, so here's what I've been working on. Travelog uh, is an app that I started around um, four months ago. I actually started rewriting it four months ago. It's already on the App Store. Uh, I'm not very happy with the current version. This is the update that uh, I'm currently developing. It's basically a travel app that can aggregate important data that people need. So you know apps like um, Yelp, Tri Triplingo, uh, what else? Google Translate for translations. Google News for news. Basically, this app takes takes it all and aggregates it into one app, and uh, it's really simple. You can basically just swipe across um, the detail view, and you can get news. You can swipe up to get translations uh, for the language. Also, one thing that this app does that a lot of apps don't is it finds people who are going to be in your city. Let's say business colleagues, uh, based on uh, it's got a social network around it. So let's say you connect with this person and uh, you both of your record flights are going to Beijing. It'll use that data and it'll find out um, that he's going to be in your city and you can go ahead and message him, maybe set up a, a business meeting or something. So this is Contra and uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of not even a final mock-up yet, but um, I will relate to it later, which is why I'm talking to it about it. It's basically an app that can um, you create topics, it's, it's a debating platform, and you create topics like iOS versus Android or Star Wars versus Star Trek, and you can get opinions really fast. This is um, an app that I made for the IB when they held a conference uh, last June. Basically, it's just a uh, timetable, it shows the speakers, shows a map and stuff. Uh, this is a uh, parking app for Dublin. It uses real-time data to find parking near you. You can get directions to the parking. Uh, you can favorite the parking. You can actually create a timer so it'll notify you once your timer timer has is over and you can go ahead and like go back in your car or something. I don't know. Uh, iCab to go uh, is a pretty interesting app. Uh, this is for a client actually and I guess uh, there was no taxi app in Brazil uh, deficiency and so he came to me to uh, develop this app which is a uh, a simple taxi app, just like uh, the one in Singapore. And uh, okay, how to make a good app? Oh, uh, all right. Focus on the small things and execute a big thing. This is kind of a motto I've had for a while, and I'm going to elaborate now. These are some of the techniques I use when creating an app. Make the app seamless. Work for the user. Do stuff in the background. Now, I see a lot of apps where it every time you open it, it has to load new data. And it uses uh, a kind of really intrusive alert view, which disables the entire UI until loading is finished, which is really annoying. And I think by putting it uh, up in the uh, status bar, it, it shows that it's uh, still in progress, but you can still access the UI. I think, it's, I think that's an, really important. So here's how you do stuff in the background. I'm pretty sure you all know this, uh, GCD. And using MT status bar overlay, which is on GitHub, uh, you can really easily draw over the status bar. Now, I, I see heaps of apps, which are kind of social networking apps. And whenever you go to a page that loads data, it has to reload that data, and it takes a forever sometimes. So one thing I did was on startup, I basically downloaded the users that are re relevant to the current user, and I cached it. And then basically stored it in a cache, and when, whenever you're calling the method that downloads the user well, with a cache policy, it can actually return the cached version, and it can uh, refresh the cached uh, uh, users on startup. So. This is a is a great way to um, a great way to get uh, data really quick. You can store it with uh, NSUSA defaults. Wouldn't recommend that. Um, or core data uh, 
SQLite, and its cache, but make sure to delete old data. Prune out the old data because you don't want too much memory consumption going on. Queuing user actions. Say you're on Twitter, uh, over, this is Tweetbot here on the uh, right, and you want to favorite a tweet. Well, in many apps I get an error saying you can't because you're offline. But what if I, I could just press the favorite button and get that satisfaction of favoring someone's tweet, but once I actually get internet, it'll, uh, it'll update, it'll do it. Well, queuing user actions is really awesome. You can use core data for it, uh, MK Network qu uh, Kit, um, developed by uh, Mugand Kumar. The Pars iOS SDK uh, has a really awesome method called Save Eventually, uh, which does it automatically for you. It'll, it'll only save the data once you've got a valid Wi-Fi connection. And there are some others here. You can do it yourself with NS user defaults. Read the user's mind. As you can see here, it's an autocomplete uh, text field. So HD autocomplete text field is a uh, is an open source project on GitHub, and you can basically set it up to respond to text changes and give a response or like an auto completion based on what the person says or what the uh, user typed in. It's really great. And um, with uh, iOS 7, they announced a new API called Background Refresh. It basically figures out when the user uses your app, and it schedules uh, periods where it can re reload the data, and here's how it works. Uh, I can't show you, actually. Support multiple screen sizes. I think this is really important, because say you have a user on, your iPhone, on an iPhone and an iPad, both logged in, uh, using them at different times. Make sure to support both screen sizes. I think that's really important. I think that's a. I think the user will like that. Say no. Uh, don't don't overstuff the app with features. I think that's something I see a lot of people, a lot of my friends, who are developers make. Just tailor it to a few features that make sense. And from I I, I like to disallow customization. I don't think that uh, I think you established uh, establish a kind of style and you stick to it and then you give the user uh, what you think they need, what you know they need. And as you can see here, um, this app, the bottom half of the dashboard, uh, this is a homework app, it takes up a lot of space uh, that could be used for you know, actual user content. And the middle uh, panel there, uh, you see that calendar text, you can click that and it'll take you to a view with only a calendar. So what about you just get rid of that monetization stuff, put it like in small icons at the bottom, and just put a calendar there. So I think user content is above all is like really important. Creating a seamless app is really is really important. I think working for the user, giving them new data, uh, making it really fast, is just great. How do you make sure the user can, well, use your app? Cleverly embed tutorials. I see heaps of um, apps that have a tutorial when you start up, and you have to go through like five swipes to finish it. And usually I just swipe through it, and I know a lot of people just swipe through it without seeing. And if the app actually needed a tutorial and it's not very intuitive, then you don't even know how to use the app after you just skip right past the tutorial. So that's why you should cleverly embed tutorials. Like um, this is a chat app. Of Cato, um, it's a communication enterprise uh, system, and it's it's really clever because if you haven't selected a chat room to speak in, it will just have a little indicator saying, or oh, swipe to go to a chat room. Replicate OS UI elements. You see that notification badge over there? That tells the user that it's something that they haven't seen yet. And I think, and this is actually the same notification badge um, uh, on iOS, on iOS 7, this is um, something I changed a little bit. But custom badge uh, is a open source project on GitHub. The user is C K T E E B E, um, and it's really great. The user will instantly recognize this. Also, don't be afraid to replicate OS UIs. Probably won't get sued, but you can have um, if you if you're creating a messages uh, UI system. This is really great because the user will automatically know how to use it. This is basically a duplicate of the uh, Messages app. 
and this is an open source project uh, called Messages Table View Controller. Use gestures. Gestures are really important. I think the best thing about a uh, mailbox, an action-based email system, is the fact that you can just swipe the mail off. It's really natural. And I found a great open source project called MC Swipe Table View Cell on GitHub that does just that. Alternatively, you could do it yourself with UI Gesture Recognizer. And use indicators. If you have a swiping screen, how does the user know how to when, when to swipe? Use those little page controls for swiping and other indicators that tell the user they can actually do it. Make a simple and beautiful interface. Clear is probably my favorite example of this. I think just, yeah, there's no tutorial or anything, and it's just so simple that it's just amazingly easy to use. Make sure the user knows how to use your app. Focus on the small things. Refine your app. First of all, make it dynamic. Don't make it still. Have some sort of like feel to it. For me, uh, I have like a miles banner that shows the number of miles you've clocked, and I just order scroll with the scroll view. And it looks really great, and it, it feels very lively. And I think animations are really important, a key aspect of this, and you can use Quartz Core for that. I like to hide things in my app. Um, that shows the weather and it gives it in Fahrenheit and if you click it it'll show Celsius. I think by um by by just hiding these little things that really like convenient convenient little things, it's really great. I like to align things perfectly. I also spend hours playing with RGB to make sure that it looks right. Make it buttery smooth. I feel like lag is probably the worst thing in an app. When it, when an app is smoother it feels really great. And this has happened to me quite a few times. I've put a, an app in review process, I've noticed a bug, and I've taken it down and fixed it. I don't want bugs in my app. I think to, be, to have a good app, it should be bugless. Part of creating a complete user experience is um, focusing on the small things. If you show care in your app, then people are gonna see that too. What makes your idea unique? Because your, your big idea is probably done a hundred times already on the App Store. And your job is to make the best app. For Contra, uh, the unique part of it was that it's not just an ambiguous, like, ask a question, get an answer, or uh, say something and get responses. It's this versus that. And establishing like that kind of format, I think it brings hype and it brings a lot of creativity from the community. But if your app idea uh, has been done a hundred times, like you know how developers keep making simplistic weather apps, then make it the best app. I think making a really, really good app is just the most important part of iOS development. Using all these techniques I've talked about, I think this can really help make a good app. Making it seamless, intuitive, and, um, fo and focusing on the small things, really caring about it, refining it. It, it makes a, it, it, the result is a really good, a great app. So um, make the best app. Here's my contact details. Uh, that's all I have for today.